Okay, Matthew, this is a special show. This right. is the throwback, uh, sort of a uh, historical archive of sorts of the video footage I took when the throwback Maximum Vintage parts were being made for bobbins and um, uh, the slugs and some other parts that I took about 10 years ago and compiled into this video that I thought I'd show the throwback audience and you could have a look at it too and we could comment sure. about it as uh, as we view it. So, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Was this the, was this lost footage? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was almost lost footage. It did require converting from my old Canon video recorder to a format that would work with an iPad. Not videotape. Well, it was it digital. Video actually, tape? no. It was one of those little memory cards. Okay. It was a flash card. It did. It was digital, and I assumed the thing is going to work, but it doesn't unless you convert it at this point. So has to be converted. I edited this on an iPad. So to make it <clears throat> make it work, I had to spend four hours converting it. And so I thought, well, I'm definitely making a video now. So you're going to watch it. I'll see it and comment. I've never you're going to watch it. <laughs> but we'll talk about it. It's cool stuff. You know, I, I find it cool. And, uh, you know, let's, well, let's this have are, This is all the parts that that we, well, we had made all the old, these well, old parts. It, it, we have all the parts made. I videotaped some of it. Some of them are regional guys that I went to to have like the bobbins made, right? And the uh, slugs. I have those done in town here, and some of the measurements for like screws and covers I did here locally. And um, although they're made, they're made uh, in Illinois and um, for the screws. But anyway, the. Um, I've got some of it on video, so that's what I'm going to show. Get mm -hmm. ready to be wowed. Okay. okay. Looking forward to it. Let's go. All right, Matthew. The, a... the, the first clip here is the making of the throwback Maximum Vintage PAF is, bobbins. Is it, will this all be like scratchy black and white? No, this is modern color. Oh, I thought it was like... The, um, I think the first thing here is a bobbin that Matthew Larrabee drew up. My friend uh, Matthew Larrabee drew up. In CAD, which was very helpful, but I brought it to Fred or Mulder, and he said, "You know, I'm going to draw this up again because you have to factor in the shrinkage of the plastic." So, but uh, this is actually taken at Fred's. This may be his drawing. I don't know, but the result here is the PAF bobbin mold in progress here that Fred or Plastic Mulder made. I gave him a sample vintage bobbin here that he mm -hmm. measured off of actually a pair of them, and he made the what is called the universal mud base, I believe, which is that right there, which allows us to have different cavities for different parts. Okay. And then the actual uh, inserts for those parts go into the mud base, and he tools this up with, uh, there's a lot of this going up, going on where he, he he's squaring up and truing up um, the different bits of steel that go into the mold by hand here with this grinding setup. So is he constantly taking measurements and then going back and going yeah, forth yeah. with the original part, I guess, right? Is it... Yeah, well, I think he used the original part to draw up the, um, the, the cat drawing and have to factor in the uh, shrinkage of the plastic. And then from that and his decades of experience. experience. He knows what parts to make to make that come to pass. But I know he, he can tell by looking at the part how the original mold was made by where the parting lines and ejector pin marks are on the original part. So it was actually essential that he have that in order to precisely duplicate it. And did you pull apart an old pickup to give him that part? Yep. Yeah. Strip the wire off. Um, there's four variations of the bobbin, because the original mold was a four-chamber mold uh, for PAF bobbins. We chose two of those uh, chambers for the slug and screw coil. So our, our mold is a two-chamber mold, but um, 
we, had, we picked what we thought was kind of the, uh, what you most typically see as far as the screw, or sorry, the circle and square offset. There's Fred. Nice, nice guy. I was at his place, I don't know how many times, but just for approving these parts for the, the mold, maybe three or four days overall. I had to do three revisions of the mold to get the circle and square hole just right. I believe that's the mud base he's working on there. And he uh, does some of the initial work with CNC, which he's um, doing here. So it's still, it's still yes. the bottom, right? Well, I don't know what part that is. It's some part of the mold. And um, I know he hand polishes one, he hand polished it to the right level for the vintage part once the cavity was all done. That was still the vintage bobbin. That, that's the sitting, vintage bobbin there. We let there. him just hold on to those. Yeah. This is a, um, a strat cover being the mold for that being made with a carbon electrode burning into the metal. And it sounds like frying bacon, but it's not, I assure you. <laughs> that was the strike cover. Okay, this is a, a cool performance that we saw with Paul and uh, Todd From of Anson Funderburg and little Charlie Beatty performing in town here. Anson Funderburg, you say, is like a, a model of a uh, subdued Austin playing. Well, I, yeah, I don't know what they call it, but I guess in that in that uh, school of like Jimmy Vaughn, where it's like less is more. Yeah. You know, they're not where Stevie Ray Vaughn was uh, louder and faster and more aggressive, and his brother is. Yeah. Let's let him play. Less is more. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie playing a very cool thin line guitar of the week. We wonder who made it. Yeah, we wonder if Michael Stevens of uh, Stevens Guitars made it yeah. down in Texas. <laughs> Anson Thunderbird is the inspiration for Beavis, of Beavis and Butthead, correct? I've, I've heard something like that, but... Is, is Mark Judge? Mike Judge. Mike Judge. Was the bass player in the sort of bar scene down in Austin, and I guess knows him, so maybe he's done this. All right, that was a cool performance. So uh, these are the Throwback Maximum Vintage PAF slugs. And I found out these really need to be done on an old fashioned screw machine to get the right look. CNC gives too clean of a cut. So what we're gonna see here is a, this is a old school brown and sharp screw machine. And uh, to get the right look, it needs to be on one of these things. They need to be made on one of them. and. It takes more time to make the slugs than it does the it does screws with because screws are made on what's called a cold header machine. So when you say the right look, do you mean that little tip? Yeah, the little the bullseye. Bullseye on the yeah, and so this cuts slug. it off. You can see it cutting it off there, and and CNC does it so precisely 
that you have to uh, you have to program it into it. And um, so the place that made these is local. And I went back to get the second batch to do another batch a couple years later, and they had uh, gone CNC. And this runs off of a series of cams that they custom make for whatever the process you is you're doing. And uh, I did find another place in town that, that uh, still does it the old school way to get the right look. So I'm still where do you think that shape. machine is today? I don't know. They actually tried to sell me one, uh, but they're so big there's no way. This is a uh, pole screw, a vintage pole screw that I I took some measurements from. Actually, I had Fred do it. This is back at Fred's place uh, with an optical comparator. This is how the screw place did it for um, uh, the reproduction screws they make for us. Take very precise measurements cover here, too. I just wanted to double check the measurements with uh, Fred's setup. But... Um, so this is just to make sure that everything's going to fit. Well, you, you can take together. Well, no, you can take very precise measurements with an optical comparator from an original part. Oh, this is the throwback PAF cover buffing process. Todd the buffer does this for us. Right. I did this video before, but I thought I'll put this in here and we'll comment over it. But uh, Todd, his family, his dad, for years did the buffing for Gibson and uh, for Gibson covers and parts, you know, chrome to be chromed or nickel plated and or gold plated. And they've still got the fixtures for this. And he, Todd knows how to do this the right way. And the look of a PAF cover is really partly the, the making sure that the grinding and buffing process is done the right way. And interestingly, he actually does it on with a, uh, couple of buffers that are from the old Gibson factory and still have the Gibson tool tag on them. Just right there. Yeah. He said they were pulled out of the garbage when they, they're actually thrown in the garbage when Gibson left to, na to go to Nashville. Does that just say Gibson and like an inventory yeah, number on it? Yeah. Yeah. The first step he does here is he gets this um, grinder or uh, buffing wheel has a steel mesh belt wrapped around it that ha is connected to an idler pulley on the ground, or on the floor, and um, you kind of grind away the, to flatten the top and make sure the, the biggest divots and marks are out of the cover before you go on to the first buffing step. So this is a coarser compound. He's gonna do the sides first. I've, I've, um, it's a longer process than what, what you see here when I've edited, edited it, it, but, um, he, he does each of these individually, I'm sure to, you know, depending upon what each cover needs. It's a, you know, a lot of hand work that goes into it. And he gets the extra compound off the wheel on the front of the cover there. And he loads the, the buffing wheel up. But all of this, these steps, if, if, you, uh, if you tried to build this into a, a, into a cover to look like it ends up buffed, you wouldn't have the right look because you, you, you'd have this grinding step and buffing step. And the last that last step was what's called the color buff to get the high gloss shine on it. Hmm. But that's key to the look, I found out. Um, the, okay, so we've got two Lisa on a 102s operating, and people right. may not know, you know, mm -hmm. we have two extras. So that's we've right. got a total of four. And this is when the other two arrived on pallets. They this came, is one of them. They came from a, a guy in California's... Yeah, they came from a guy in California who used to have a shop in Burbank, and uh, Lansing speakers used to be in Burbank, made in Burbank. Hmm. And I don't, know if, I don't know if, that's, if there's any connection there or not, but um, that'd be kind of cool if there was. But this is one of them, and we've got the other one. I've got a shot of the other one. 
of these two machines. One of them was complete with counters. The other uh, didn't have the counters on it. So, but I decided we're going to restore the one with counters and um, maybe do seven string pickups on that. I think we'd be the only ones uh, doing seven string pickups on a Lee Sona 102. There's Todd, um, not Todd the Buffer, but Todd, our guy that, uh, throwback employee that does uh, packages up the strings and, and ages our covers. But he's cleaning it up here to repaint it. We've got all of the all of the guts of the machine out of it. So how many stations does that hit? Is that three? Yep, three stations. Three stations. Those are the solenoids there for the auto stops. These are the traverse gears, and we lucked out because these are the correct gears for a PAF turn per layer. And if these were not correct, it would be big bucks to have those uh, reproduced. You have to have them custom made? Yeah, 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 and I looked into it. It's not cheap at all. This is the inner mechanism for the uh, one of the stations. That's one of the mandrels for the uh, one of the stations. That's a specialty bearing for the drive shaft. That's an aircraft bearing. That's kind of it's hard to find and it's pricey. Um, these are the Vita root counters, complete with a little I think rubbed hair on them. <laughs> Ruined. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> These were gummed up, but I, I cleaned them up, WD-40, and just persistently cleaned them, and fr it freed them up. So I think those should work. This is, I think you're painting the machine here. Yep. yep. That's me. And. Looks like navy gray. Yeah, sort of a battleship gray. I got to paint the letters. The letters were originally red. You have to go over those. Yeah. And this is this is the current state it's in. We I put new crinkle coat on the counters and um it does work, just gotta get the auto stop uh mechanism set up. Um these are string winders from the old Dean Markley string winding facility. I believe it was in Vicksburg, Michigan. I was told about this by the two Dons that make our guitar strings. And Vicksburg is it's, south of the Kalamazoo. Yeah, yeah, and he said that this machine coming here behind this grate is the first machine to automatically ever put the ball end on a guitar string. And what? there's a shot here where it shows the patent plaque for it. So it says it's by Bowers Machine Company of Kalamazoo, Michigan. And that, so that in the string winding world, that is a historic machine. How old would that machine be? I don't know. I don't know if that's the very first one or if this design is, but design. it's got to be like from the 50s. The design is, it's an older machine. But this place has, is a paving company that cleared out the old Dean Markley Vicksburg facility for the uh, investors of Dean Markley because they decided they weren't going to make anything in Vicksburg anymore. And they sold this guy the machines. And, when did and they, he's selling them for pennies on the dollar. When did they clean, clear out the shop? That was, I think it was two, three years ago. Two, three years I ago. I could check the footage to make sure, but I, I was like, yeah, I could buy these, but where would you put them? Yeah. But these are machines for winding strings and bass, str guitar strings and bass strings that are just sitting there in this guy's uh, pole barn along with his equipment for, you know, doing asphalt. So it's, uh, I, I, I have to assume they're gone, but he had so many of them that some of them were outside, like this one. This one had a butcher block top and it's just destroyed. When you say butcher block top? Well, it's like a, like a butcher block, like wood glued together. Really? Yeah. Um, and it, this is a guitar string winding machine that's uh, Rusty toast. Now. Yeah, I mean, it's like warped the whole top, but um, he had some of the motors outside. He, he and though I know those are expensive, he brought them in, but um, anyway, this is uh, I used to buy Dean Markley strings, and these yeah. uh, these are the machines when I was in high school, loved them. And uh, anyway, that's what's left. Oh, this is Rob McNally, he was in town two years ago with Bob Seeger. He uses a throwback overdrive boost in some of her pickups and P90s, and he's a Nash first call Nashville session, session player. And 
When he was in town with uh, Bob Seeger, he wanted the bridge pickup replaced on his custom, and we made him one. I know this was September of 2017 because oh, I missed meeting yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. Because my the daughter was having a uh, oh. emergency surgery, so well, I couldn't be here. You can blame her. Yeah. <laughs> She's fine though. She's fine. It's all better now. <laughs> but. Uh, Saying he, well, I've, I've talked to him too, and he's told me when he's playing with Bob Seeger, because they'll have gaps between their shows, he's flying back and forth between shows in Nashville, so he doesn't miss a session opportunities. So. Yeah, yeah. And he's a busy guy. But, uh... Yeah, and if you've heard a country song, good chance he's on it. Matthew, that was the exciting historical mm -hmm. footage of the throwback Maximum Vintage parts being made. Some of them, uh, the bobbins, the slugs, and some other cool historical the sort of the buffing, and uh, the string machines, and all that stuff. A couple of cool performances by artists we like. And mm -hmm. anyway, did you enjoy that? That was very good. No, okay, it was very good. interesting to see all the parts that are being made. And who makes them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a craft, a lot of this stuff, that you wouldn't know until you... I mean, you wouldn't realize all that goes into it until you see it. At yeah. least I didn't. And um, anyway, we're lucky to have uh, th those resources that have that g guitar connection here, you know, in the Midwest and and just being this close to Kalamazoo. It, it's really a great resource for, for us at Throwback, so... Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, click like, click uh, subscribe, uh, and uh, we always love that. Click the bell for notifications of future videos, and leave your comments and questions below. And once again, thanks for letting Throwback be part of your search for great guitar tone. <laughs>